going on? Welcome back to 100% and the UFC. Sharky speaking. I hope you're all doing really well. So this is your Premier League predictions week number four, where I'm going to be predicting all Premier League fixtures which take place over the course of this weekend. And you have to get three Premier League predictions right out of ten to have a shout out on the channel. It's not very hard. If you like the series, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. It takes no longer than two seconds to do. And just before I jump into your Premier League predictions week number four, we have had our first winner, and that it goes to Brad Fieldhouse. So well done, mate. As you can see, his score predictions are on the screen right now for you to see. Uh, he got the Newcastle result correct, where we lost by two goals to one. He also predicted 2-2 in the Bournemouth game, and he also predicted 0-0 against Huddersfield and Cardiff. Now, as you can see, I'll put a link down below in the description, so if you go down and subscribe to him, I already have... You can also have a shout out and for me to subscribe to your channel if you manage to get three score predictions out of 10. And it's all about getting you guys involved as well. So it is possible that you can get three predictions out of 10 if you put your mind to it. And it's not easy, of course. Uh, and I think three predictions out of 10 is you know only right because there is 10 Premier League fixtures. And it's all about you know the foot of the game. Anyway, less of that, let's get into the uh, action. So the early kickoff on Saturday, 12.30, it's Leicester versus Liverpool. Now, Leicester beat Southampton last week by two goals to one, thanks to a late goal by Harry Maguire. Now, looking at the game, it was a tight game. I think Leicester probably just shaded it. Southampton could probably count themselves unlucky that they did come back into the game, but they left it late. You know, Leicester and they got the three points. And sometimes it, on away games, when you're not really going to have much of the ball, you've got to dig in, and that's what Leicester did. And they run away with the uh, three points. Uh, Liverpool, on the other hand, they beat Brighton by a goal to nil. Now, it was a game where I felt Brighton really missed out on, you know, getting a point in Anfield. Liverpool weren't at the best, but title contenders, you know, tend to see out games. You know, teams, you know, that play well at home like Liverpool do, who are unbeaten, you know, find ways of winning, you know, with the quality that they've got, with the manager that they've got, with the fans that Liverpool have, you know, they believe that this could be their year, and that's not a bad thing. You know, last season, they were unbelievable, and they've really kicked on this season, and I can see Liverpool going places uh, this season under Jurgen Klopp. Hopefully... Liverpool can go on and win the title. Um, you know, they've really strengthened this summer, and I've got on record to say that. And I just think against Leicester City, you know, an early kickoff, it's going to be a tough game. But I reckon Liverpool might be able to see this one out, and I'm going to go for a Leicester 1, Liverpool 2 result. Next up, it's the free puck kickoffs on the Saturday the same day, and it's Brighton versus Fulham. Now, Brighton, I went on record to say that they lost by a goal to Liverpool at Anfield. I felt they were unlucky. You know, they played some really good stuff, especially in the second half when they went one down. You know, they had chances to get back into it. You know, they missed some absolute sitters, and Chris Hutton was uh, good at the end of the game, you know. Uh, they also lost in the Carabao Cup, uh, 1-0 to Southampton, so they will be looking for a response against uh, Fulham on Saturday. You know, Brighton have not had a bad start of the season. You know, they have got a good result against Manchester United. So, you know, they have got what it takes to do well, and like I keep saying, their home performances are going to be crucial to Southampton. Should I say Brighton to getting uh, results and staying up this season? Fulham, on the other hand, you know, they beat Burnley by four goals to two. You know, they got their first win of the season. I think it's been coming. Fulham have been playing some excellent football and they haven't really had the rewards for it, especially against Crystal Palace. But in the Premier League, it's a brutal league. If you don't take your chances, doesn't matter how good your football is, uh, you're going to get punished. And Mitrovic has been on fire. I had no doubt when he left us that when he went to Fulham, especially in the Championship, that he's going to find. You know, a system that works for him. The players that he has around him work and he's enjoying his football and I wish him all the best at Fulham. He's doing really well. Hopefully he continues to go on and score the goals for uh, Fulham. And like I say, Fulham, I like how they have a go teams. You know, they're not just sitting back. You know, they, they want to continue where they left off in the championship. And I think it's going to be a tough game on Saturday, no doubt against Brighton. Brighton are very good at home. But I'm going to stick my neck on the line. I'm going to back Fulham to win this one by a goal. And I can see Fulham continuing where they left off against Burnley at Craven Cottage last week. Next up, it's Chelsea versus Bournemouth. Now, Chelsea were very fortunate to beat us at St James's Park by two goals to one. Um, yes, we played five at the back and you know, they couldn't break one down and they did have you know, a lot of the ball, which you expected. You know, they had something like 82% possession, which is quite rare when you, you, know, you go away from home. But they've got the squad, like, a bit like Liverpool, they've got the manager. They've got what it takes to be up there, you know, winning the Premier League. And, Chelsea will be expected to go on and win the Premier League, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, they will be expected to go to a lot of teams and win. 
and like I say, they played a really good game against us and they broke it down in the punish well. Uh, Bournemouth, on the other hand, you know, they've had a really good start of the season as well, picking up seven points from nine. Uh, they got a 2-2 draw against Everton, coming back from 2-0 down. What I like about Bournemouth and Eddie Howe is Eddie Howe believes in the players. Bournemouth have a very good, you know, United squad. They believe in each other. They believe in what they're about. They don't just give in, especially when they're 2-0 down. They've got a positive attitude. You know, they take the game to teams and they play some very good fast flow football. And, you know, you can only admire what Eddie Howe's doing at the Vitality Stadium. And Bournemouth, for me, will still up this season. No question about that. And, you know, I can only... You can only enjoy what Bournemouth do, you know, on a week-by-week -week basis. But I think going to Stamford Bridge, I think it will be a tough game for Bournemouth. I think it could be a game too far for them. I think they will lose their unbeaten run in the Premier League season. Um, realistically, I think Chelsea will have too much for them in terms of quality and the Stamford Bridge. Chelsea play really well at the bridge. I'm going to back Chelsea to win this one by three goals to one. Next up, it's Crystal Palace versus Southampton. Now, Crystal Palace are on a very good run of form at the moment. You know, they beat Watford last time out. Uh, playing some decent football and Crystal Palace have proven a lot of people wrong this season. Uh, they, you know they're, they're playing some good stuff under Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson isn't a manager where he believes in being relegated. He's always that stable sort of manager where he'll keep you up. You know he'll have a few good games, a few bad games. But playing at Salhurst Park, it's going to be you know a fortress for them. You know getting behind that crowd that they've got there. Salhurst is brilliant. Uh, they're very loud. They're always a the 12th man, always getting behind the squad. And I think Crystal Palace will be fine this season. No question about that. Uh, Southampton on the other hand, uh, they lost by two goals to one to Leicester and they also uh, won in the Carabao Cup away at Brighton uh, with a library late goal by Charlie Austin. So Southampton will come into this game full of confidence after the Carabao Cup win, but they're going to have to really sort of Premier League form out you know, if they want to stay up this season. Um, I think it will be a tight game at Crystal Palace. I think Southampton and Crystal Palace seem to have a very good game against each other, record tells you that. Um, I think it could be a very interesting game. I think both teams will, will go all attack. I think Southampton will probably defend for a lot more in the game, of course, but I think both teams will not be scared to have a go. Uh, in terms of a score prediction, I'm going to go for Crystal Palace 1, Southampton 1 result. Next up, it's Everton versus Huddersfield. Now, Everton will be very disappointed uh, the way they played against Bournemouth after being 2 0 up. You know, they should have really have taken the game with them. You know, when, when Everton played uh, Bournemouth, you know, they, they really had a chance to go on and win the game 3 or 4. But after going 2 0 up, they collapsed and they kind of remained as of that pre season. You know, they were winning games and then they were somehow dropping, dropping you know, silly results and losing games and, you know, drawing games where they shouldn't have. And Everton have got a quality squad, you know, against a lot of opposition. You know, the Richardson got a silly red card uh, where it wasn't meant to be. And let's hope that doesn't go to cost them, you know, for the next three games because. You know, he's a crucial player for them. He was last season for Watford and he was starting to hit form. And he didn't really have to lash out uh, last week when he did. Uh, it was a feisty game against Bournemouth. Don't get us wrong. It was two teams going up against each other. Everton, I think they'll be fine this season. No question about that. Uh, Huddersfield, on the other hand, they have not exactly had the best start of the season. I do predict them to struggle. Uh, they lost last night against Stoke City 1-0 in the Premier League. Uh, they also drew with Cardiff City. So... They're not yet registered the first three points, but they have got the first point on board, of course. Um, I think going to Goodison Park is going to be a tough game for them. I just don't think they've really got enough quality in the squad to really take you know, the, the game to teams. And I think Everton, they will be expected to win you know, at home. They will be expected to win at least 50% of their games. And I think Everton will have too much quality for Huddersfield. So I'm going to go for a score prediction. Everton 2, Huddersfield 0. Next up, it's West Ham versus Wolves. Now, West Ham have not had the best start of the season, you know, losing three goals to one to Arsenal and losing the other two games before that, you know, they yet to pick up a point in the Premier League. Uh, you know, they've, they've got some good players there, they've got a good manager in Pellegrini, but he just needs to find the right rhythm, he just needs to find the right structure to his team, he needs to try and make the right substitutions at the right time, not too late. Um, West Ham need to learn how, to, you know, sort of, when they have the ball, and when they have possession and when they're creating opportunities to put the ball in the back of the net, they had plenty against Arsenal. You know, they could have got a result, but they didn't because they were so wasteful in Arsenal with the squad that they've got, with the quality that they've got, punished them. And in the end, deservedly lost the game 3 1. I have nothing to answer for. Wolves, on the other hand, you know, they got a very good 1 1 draw against Manchester City. You know, they had a go at them. Yes, similar to us, they didn't have as much possession, but they used the counter attack very, very well. And against Man City at the end, uh, at Molyneux, they didn't really have a chance. Man City struggled at times. 
Yes, Man City got back into the game when they were 1-0 down, but Wolves showed how to defend and how to see out the game. And I think Wolves will be fine this season. I've got on record to say that. They've got a good squad. You know, very good players. Ruben Neves, for example. And I think Wolves, I just see them having to go to a lot of teams. I think they will beat a few teams and they will lose, but I can just expect Wolves to turn it around. I think West Ham will register the first point of the year Premier League season. I reckon it will be a tough game. And yes, they will be expected to win you know, at the Olympic Stadium, but I think Wolves will go there with a game plan. And I think West Ham will have to try and find a way of winning this game, but I really can't see it as we get some sorry West Ham fans. I'm going to go for a West Ham 1, Wolves 1 result. Next up, it's the late kickoff, 5.30. It's Manchester City versus my team, Newcastle United. Now, Man City, I've just spoken about the Drew 1-1 one, one with Wolves. Now, Man City were bad. They were just lethargic at times. They were really misplacing passes. They are missing De Bruyne, of course. Uh, but that's not to say that they haven't got a good squad. You know, Mendy's been brilliant for them. You know, ever since he's uh, you know, walked into the club, Man City will be expected to win the league, no question about that. They've got the talent, you know, they've got the players there, the, the, the trickery, the skill on the ball. It's just scary to watch the way they break and numbers. And I think ourselves, Newcastle, it's going to be tough. You know, we've had a really tough run into this season. Uh, we've only picked up one point from three, and it's not going to get any easier against Man City on Saturday afternoon or evening when the game kicks off. You know, we just went off the back of a 2 1 defeat to Chelsea and I think to be honest we got what we deserved in the end you know off the ball we didn't play too bad you know Rafa played five at the back you know we managed to tackle Chelsea we managed to cause some problems but all in all playing five at the back you're there to cause you know trouble to the opposition you're there to sort of like stop them but we didn't and we've kind of like lost what we were doing in the second half and the minute Chelsea took the lead you know we've done well to come back but went back to the five at the back and we just sort of like lost the rhythm again and Chelsea, you know, got got the result, and the pen for me was never a pen. Uh, Shaw won the ball, but against Man City, I don't even think against any team, especially at home, you shouldn't be playing five at the back. You know, you've just got to have a go. Uh, we've got to do what Wolves done last week and have a go at them. Yes, they are going to be expected to win at the Etihad. You know, they're going to be decent, and you know, they're going to win at least all their games this season at home. They're going to be unbeaten, like probably Liverpool will be. And we've just got to try and find a rhythm because it's. It's not going to get any easier, you know, after Man City, we've got Arsenal coming up and then we've kind of got a run in where we can actually, you know, go and get some points. But I think Man City will have too much work and they're going to have too much quality. And as much as I like to see we can go there and get a draw, I really can't say that either. And that kills us to say that as a Newcastle fan. But you've got to remember who we're going to be up against. Uh, it's going to be the final result at the end. It's going to be Man City 3, Newcastle 1. Now we're going to move on to the Sunday games. The first one is half one. It's Cardiff versus Arsenal. Now Cardiff got... Uh, there, another point after drawing with us. Then they also drew with Huddersfield, so they got two points from nine. Um, they've not really registered a goal in the Premier League as of yet. Uh, they also lost by three goals to one at home to Norwich, so they're not really on the best run of form at the moment. Uh, I do predict that they go down. I don't think they've got enough quality in the squad. I think Cardiff fans know that. I don't think they've spent enough in the summer to really warrant to stay up. Um, yes, they're going to be at home in the cup against an Arsenal team who won. Uh, last time out against West Ham by three goals to one at the Emirates. You know, they will be expected to win again. You know, West uh, also have got the quality, you know, Lacazette, Abamian, Ozil. They have got what a team to break, you know, these sort of clubs down, Cardiff. Um, Arsenal will be expected to get another win, especially away from home to try and break their away record as well. So I think, and when I say break their away record, they'll want to win their first uh, away game of the season. I think Cardiff. For me, will just not have enough, and I think Arsenal will have enough in the game. I think they'll have enough quality, to, you know, to go on and win the game. I think they'll be too good for Cardiff uh, on the day. So I'm going to predict a Cardiff City nil, Arsenal three result. Next up, it's four o'clock. It's Burnley versus Manchester United. Now Burnley haven't had the best start of the season. They're struggling in the Europa League. Uh, I think as recording this, they're going to be playing tonight, the second leg. So let's wait and see what they do. Um, yeah, they lost by four goals or two away to Fulham. Craven Cottage, of course, is not an easy place to go. They go hammered off Watford. I predict a long season for Burnley. I think they'll stay up, don't get us wrong. I do think they've got enough in there, but I think now they need to focus on the Premier League. I think they're going to be going out the Europa League. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they do get a good cup run, but they just don't have enough strength and depth. I don't think they'll have a big enough spot to cope. Uh, Manchester United, on the other hand, got an absolute rollicken off Tottenham, losing by three goals and they'll ask home to Tottenham. You know, 3-0 is not a good result for them at all, Trafford. Mourinho's under pressure. He walked out. And I think if 
Man United don't go to Turf Moor and get something, I think Jose Mourinho could get the sack. I'm surprised he hasn't been sacked by now. Uh, by the way, you know, Man United have started this season. I think Man United were poor. Tottenham could have won by more on the day. Man United, I think, need to change it round against Burnley. Yes, I think Burnley will defend for long parts, and I think Man United will have to break them down. Burnley are OK at Turf Moor. But I think Man United will or should have enough to break them down. They have got the quality, they just need to show it and they need to work the ball better. Lukaku needs to finish because Lukaku for me was shocking against Tottenham. He missed an absolute sitter. So in terms of a score prediction, be honest with you, I think it will be a tough game for long periods. But I'm going to go Burnley 1, Manchester United 2. Next up, it's another 4 o'clock kickoff and it's Watford against Tottenham Hotspur. Now Watford lost by 2 goals to 1 uh, away to Crystal Palace. They'll be one to respond. They've had a good start of the season. You know, Troy Deeney has had a good start. You know, you look at, you know, Andre Gray. He's had a really good start for Watford and they're hitting the ground running. Uh, I think Spurs, on the other hand, you know, Spurs beat Manchester United by three goals and they'll probably the best result that they've had in a long time. You can't really back against Pochettino's men. I think they've had a good start. Tottenham, again, will be up there winning the Premier League, of course. It's how long they last. Eriksen, Kane, Deli Alli, they've all been on fire so far this season. And I think they could have beat Manchester United by four, five, six in Old Trafford. Nobody would have complained uh, whatsoever. I think it's going to be another tight game because it's a London derby. Watford, you know, are half decent at home. Spurs are good, you know, away from home. I reckon in terms of a score prediction, it's going to be Watford 1, Tottenham 2. Now, that's just me, my score predictions for this weekend's game. I will leave a list here or there. So you can see uh, what I've predicted. So you can put yours in down below in the comments. Like I say, to remember, you've got to get three score predictions right out of ten. It's going to be a very, very interesting weekend of Premier League football. You know, it's always nice to have the Premier League football back. And yeah, I do apologise that the video has gone on uh, longer than normal. I did say it's going to be a 15 to 20 minute series. And also well done to Brad Fieldhouse, who got three score predictions right out of ten. Like I say, go and subscribe to his channel. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Help us to get to 1,500 subscribers. That is the aim uh, in the short term. So I only need something like 40 odd subscribers. So if you can go along and do that, that'd be really, really, really uh, good of you to do that. And also hit the like button as well. Put your comments in down below. And yes, until the next one, I'll see you all later. I will, the lads.